Hey, Scott Wilkinson here, Director of Content at AVS Forum. I'm here with Dave Bott, the founder of AVS, and Mark Feiner, the Technical Director of the Digital Entertainment Group, DEG. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Now, uh, DEG, Digital Entertainment Group, is concerned with the content side of things, a uh, video in particular, or is it also audio? Well, we focus on video, and we have precedent for doing this going back now almost 15 years. Some of you may remember that back in the mid-90s when DVD was first developed, there was almost a format war at place. The companies came together and aligned the proposals, and as a result, we had one format, but we needed an initiative that would bring the studios and the CE companies together to promote it. And the Digital Entertainment Group was established then to do that. Since that time, we moved into Blu-ray, and we brought the industry together following that format skirmish, which of course is quite common in our business. And we're also working on digital operatives like Ultraviolet, which is an interoperability platform to allow file to be moved from one content platform to another. Now, how is DEG getting involved in Ultra HD now, or 2160p, uh, the new 4K standard? Well, one of the interesting things about DEG being studio-centric is we're working across all of the content providers in all of our endeavors. And 4K content for Ultra HD is no exception. So right now we're looking at content from a variety of sources to try to bring together and establish a roadmap for the industry. Whether it's content from film that's been repurposed and transferred from film to high def masters for uh, distribution both theatrically in the home or whether it's going to be new packaged media extensions of Blu-ray in the future, and even new opportunities for cable, satellite, and streaming and downloaded content. All of these platforms and others will be deployed to deliver Ultra HD to the home and to other platforms and mobile applications in the future. Certainly this is very important because we're now seeing at this show and, and others that uh, Ultra HD TVs are becoming very available, people can buy them, but where's the content? So it's a chicken and egg problem, as Joe Kane said in a previous uh, interview, uh, but I'm sure the DEG will be following the how the, how the transition is made from HD to UHD. Uh, one of the ways that I see that happening, certainly, is because the studios are now more or less always mastering in 4K, they've got the material ready to go. That's a key point, Scott. What's happened in the last five to six years is as the film industry continues to transition away from film-based archiving, they need a master that's digital-based with far more resolution than anything remotely assembling HD quality. So in the last few years, whether it be 4K or in some case 8K masters have been established, being used as the archiving platform, and then that content can be repurposed and converted for use both theatrically to drive all of the tens of thousands of screens in the cinema that are digital based and ultimately for the home. So this has been building up. Our numbers, there's currently about 80 to 85 films in release theatrically in 4K, whether they be transferred from film or originated in 4K uh, shooting and production. And over 100 other films have been shot on cameras like the Red Epic or the Sony series that are going to be available shortly for deployment both theatrically and ultimately in the home. You know, I found that I find that very interesting because I was always led to believe that even up till now, even though movies are being shot and or mastered in 4K, they're distributed in 2K because most theaters don't even have 4K projectors, although some do now, and I only recently learned in the last month or so that Actually, you can see native 4K in some theaters. That's correct. And this goes back to an initiative that was established by the motion picture industry back almost 12 years ago, the Digital Cinema Initiative. The industry, driven by the studios, had to establish a presentation platform for theaters. And at the time, of course, in the rollout of high definition, many of those groups thought that 2K, which is about 7% more information than high definition TV, would be enough. Fortunately, another group argued that with home being high def oriented, ultimately we'll need something much better theatrically to engage and entertain people in theaters, which after all was a much more critical and bigger screen viewing environment. Now, because of that movement of the roughly 45,000 screens worldwide that are out there in the digital cinema space today, almost 25% of them are 4K. 
and a lot of those films are distributed both for 2K and 4K by the studios for that purpose. I've heard that the uh, the digital cinema package, the DCP, the file that actually gets delivered to your local cinema, typically has 2K and 4K data on the same file so they can use whichever one they have the capability of. That's correct, and in other cases, some of the theaters with 2K projector, I'm sorry, 4K projectors can take 2K content and even upscale it, just as we do in advanced home theaters today. I find it interesting also, and you said 25% of the theaters now are 4K ready. The great part about this is where technology is going. As technology moves faster and faster in this, in this area, costs come down faster and faster, which means now the cinemas that you go to, the cost of upgrading to the next product line, the 4K product line, is, is that much you know, lower. So we can see more and more of that come along. You're correct, and other things are happening concurrently with this in the same time frame. We're not only moving to higher resolution, we're moving to higher frame rates, you know, greater color, wider color gamut, and even more immersive audio. And that's all impacting the theatrical experience, which historically migrates to the home as well. And that's just it. About AVS Forum members, uh, obviously it's about the home experience for the most part. And 4K projectors and 4K displays, as they're coming out, people are saying, what about the content? What about the content? So as we discussed earlier, you know, there'll be content, but I think a lot of them are waiting for the, for the displays to get out in the market. But you, what you're saying is the content's going to be readily available and it's going to come in on different media formats, correct? I agree. And I think one of the key challenges we face, both with the Consumer Electronics Association and the industry at large is we've got to tell enthusiasts and consumers at large what the roadmap is. In other words, don't bet on this as a risk, but take advantage of the products today, use it to upscale and upconvert your current content, and let them know what is coming, whether it's across cable, satellite, digital, or packaged media, and even potentially broadcast in the future. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, Scott probably has more on that subject itself, I believe, right? Yes, I was gonna. I was gonna talk about uh, the first generation of 4K UHD TVs, which are out now, or coming out, that do not have a lot of the capabilities that have not yet even been finalized. Right, higher frame rates, wider color gamuts, um, more bit depth to the to the image, all that kind of stuff. HDMI 2.0, H.265 uh, codec, which is now done but uh, there are some questions about how good it's going to be on a really large screen. In any event, uh, there are a lot of unknowns yet that the first generation TVs, most of them anyway, won't be able to deal with. You're correct, but I will tell you, Scott, being in the business a long time, this is not unusual. We rolled out high definition without HDMI. We've rolled out other platforms in the past, going back to the first digital entertainment format, Compact Disc, which were not in their most advanced state at that point. That coupled with the fact that the techniques to produce content, whether it be remastering or recording, have to be enhanced and refined, and that takes time to teach a new technique to people involved in the business. It even opens up more, you're talking about recording. I mean, the video content, shooting it is extremely different. Now, I shouldn't say extremely, but it also can play a role in how you shoot now based on you know what you're looking at, um, the frame rates and everything and what have you. So the cinematography itself can also change based on the technology you're using. That's correct, and if you look at what's happening with digital cinematographers, this actually began with the transition to 3D for theatrical market teaching cinematographers and DPs how to view and shoot in 3D, and in other cases, uh, repurpose content for 3D distribution and presentation. That's now migrated to so-called 4K, and they are learning with a whole new generation of tools that technique as well. Now, you don't foresee anything like we had with the HD, DVD, and Blu-ray wars. You don't see anything like that for the 4K stuff coming down the pipe or anything like that, right? No, I don't think so. I think what's happening instead, the challenge we have, is today the consumer, largely because of the digital transition in general, has been trained or conditioned to expect content from a wide variety of sources. And this is not just for home entertainment. We also have to take this growing interest and activation of mobile entertainment and find ways to integrate that with the home as well. That's the whole promise and premise behind entertainment anywhere on any device at any time and 4k ultra hd will be no exception there's a there's a whole summit here on the second screen 
experience, where, which is another aspect of what you're talking about, I think, where you might have a, a big screen TV or a projector or something, and then you've got a tablet or something in your lap, and you're able to gather more information about what you're watching or chat with your friends while you're all watching the same thing. Not that that's necessarily going to remain. The whole idea of scheduled TV is going away because you can just download or stream whenever you want. So it's not like, oh, a Thursday at 10 o'clock, the new episode is coming on and we, gotta, we, we can all watch it together. Who cares? Well, this is just, again, another example of what's happening across our space where products are no longer single-purpose products. They have multifunctionality, multiple benefits lifestyle-wise. Even, I can't mean it this way in a negative way, but the basic way, the lowly Blu-ray player not only provides 2D, not only provides 3D, not only can upscale to 4K, but provides network connectivity and still backward compatibility to DVD and CD. That is all in a very affordable product that is the centerpiece in most entertainment systems today. So, the future and the way we're experiencing our industry growing forth. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Mark. My pleasure.